So thank you everyone for, for having me. So I'm here to debate my intellectual ne nemesis, I could say, Jason Brennan. And I, it's a little easier for me, I think, uh, doing it here in Switzerland. So I'll play the good cop. Um, I will, uh, I'm here to hold the fort for democracy, uh, pretty much, uh, and remind us of its promise, right? The promise of collective wisdom, collective intelligence, um, uh, rather than uh, the promise of something like ruled by autocrats uh, or even experts, supreme justices or economists, or if it comes to that, uh, ruled by algorithm. And I think Jason is a lot more open to those latter possibilities. So what's the promise of democracy? For me, again, it's the collective intelligence and even wisdom generated from institutions that center on the deliberations of ordinary citizens and build on the rich cognitive diversity that democratic inclusion brings with it. Many heads are better than one, we're smarter together, and when we exclude people, as epistocrats uh, want to do, such as Jason, when we exclude people, even a single voice, or if we do give more voice, to a subset of the population based on their credentials or um, whether they hold a PhD, we risk losing in wisdom. So this is the main argument I defend in our, um, in our book. Uh, uh, and it's a lesson that I think we constantly need to relearn. But I'm also here to acknowledge that uh, there are flaws in the current version of democracy that we have inherited from the 18th century, and that's where Jason and I indeed find common ground. We're unhappy with the status quo for different reasons. And our solutions, of course, also differ. So my view is that the current system we call representative democracy is not democratic enough. It's too elitist, exclusionary, and closed off for its own good. It's not been open enough to enough people. It's not, in fact, rooted in the kind of deliberation of ordinary citizens that are conducive to collective wisdom. Instead, it's mirrored in the competition between elected elites that are too homogeneous. Uh, one of the main flaws of representative democracy, in my view, is in the use of elections as a way to select democratic representatives. Recall that elections have been historically identified as an oligarchic selection mechanism, not a democratic one. The democratic one, historically, has always been a lot. And indeed, democracy is, in theory, about equality of power. And yet, elections which depend on individual human choice cannot structurally distribute power equally among all. Elections will also never bring to power the shy, the humble, the ordinary, even though those two have important things to contribute to the common good. And ignoring them and their views and their interests can lead to colossal mistakes. I'm not going to mention them, but from the Iraq war to um, the economic crisis of 2008 to the way um, the government caused uh, you know, the Yellow Vest movement in, in France on the basis of a, of a carbon tax that nobody wanted. There are a number of mistakes that are caused by ignoring entire swath of the population. So I believe that electoral systems have brought upon themselves as a result of their elitism, the populist backlash that we are witnessing all around. My argument is that we can reclaim the promise of democracy in a different version of it that centers on ordinary citizens instead of elected elites, or maybe in addition to them if we want to be more reformist. I call this type of system open democracy. The idea is that in it, power is open and accessible to all on an equal basis, rather than on the basis of your charisma, connections, and general ability to be elected. It's a system that empowers people with radical participation rights, such as the one that are common in um, Switzerland, like citizens' initiatives, but it's also a system in which democratic representation is rotated amongst all and distributed among all on the basis of one person, one lottery ticket. It gives us a chance to represent and being represented in turn over the course of our lives. 
Of course, it's a little strange for me to make this argument in Switzerland, of all places. Switzerland is already partly an open democracy by my standards. It thrives on the participation rights that I, that I recommend. Um, it's a land of Landsgemeinde and, and referenda. It's a country that has run one-fourth of all referendums ever held worldwide to this day. It's a country that lets the people be the final authority over its constitution. So it's pretty remarkable already. Um, and of course, it has all the markers of a very rich, successful country that has managed a linguistic, religious, and ethnic diversity in uh, um, amazing uh, ways over centuries. So Switzerland may be, for some, living proof that electoral representative democracy as, it, as we know it works well, even, or perhaps especially when, it is combined with direct democracy mechanism. Yet, even Switzerland has an oligarchic problem, or so I would argue, albeit perhaps a smaller one than most places. A recent study published in the British Journal of Political Science plots 30 countries um, on a graph that measures the level of congruence between policy outcomes and uh, majoritarian preferences on over 3,000 3, issues over 40 years. And it, 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 it plots on the, on the x-axis the preferences of lower-income uh, people, and on the y-axis, higher-income people. So you would expect that in a democracy, people would fall somewhat on the 45-degree line, right? Equally sort of uh, being, being equally responsive to all people. And guess where most people, those 40 countries from Europe, um, mostly, fall, they fall way above the 45-degree lines, which means they are overly responsive to, um, to uh, rich people, high-income people, and uh, not as responsive to um, poor people. That's a problem. The, the title of the article is called The Rich Have a Slight Edge, and it's not a huge edge, to be fair. It's about two to three, percent, two, two to three points. But over time, over decades, over perhaps centuries, you can imagine the kind of um, uh, uh, differences it can make to people's lives. And in fact, Switzerland has worse policy congruence among low-income individuals than, say, Denmark or even Portugal. And when we look now at the policy outcomes, we know that uh, Switzerland is not immune to problems that have plagued other countries, such as inflation, a housing crisis, an affordability crisis, difficulties with um, recent waves of immigration, um, as is the rest of Europe. So I want to suggest here that for all its remarkable qualities, Swiss democracy might still be insufficiently open, despite its use of the initiative another direct democracy mechanism, and still too electoral it's in, in its understanding of democratic representation. Because if we agree that lack of congruence between you know, people's preferences and, and, and outcomes, uh, policy outcomes is a problem, it turns out that direct democracy mechanism won't solve it. It won't reduce the gap. Uh, there are, there's empirical evidence that it doesn't. It only does it when it leads to um, term limits, which are a way to um, improve congruence. So what could help, in my view, is a more democratic form of representation based on lot, so one person, one lottery ticket, rather than elections. Lotocratic representation would bring back the, pers the perspectives of truly ordinary people into politics, more so and more richly than even the initiative can, and this kind of the lotocratic representation, as I call it, would make laws and policies track better citizens' preferences, therefore um, reducing the populist sort of temptation or backlash. If Switzerland were to be open to lotocratic representation, as I believe it is already, perhaps in the form of an additional chamber or um, the experimentation with citizens' assemblies, as has been done in France, my native country, it would, in fact, return to its historical roots. Until the beginning of the 19th century, Switzerland routinely used lotteries to distribute political power. Lot was seen as a necessary corrective to the corruption entailed by elections. So the model of open democracy I advocate is often seen as too idealistic and out of reach, even though some of its elements are already in place or being institutionalized as we speak in places like France, Belgium, Iceland. My view is that Switzerland could easily become the first country to implement this model as a whole. 
It already has a place, it already has in place a rich set of participation rights and direct democracy mechanisms. It also has a long history of using the lot as an anti-corruption mechanism on which it could build. Switzerland could become the proof of concept that is needed to encourage ambitious and needed reforms elsewhere. Thank you very much.